is this video just me putting off looking at Task Warrior? Honestly, a little bit. I'll get to Task Warrior at some point, but today we're looking at an application known as Time Trace. Task Warrior is an amazing application, but it has a lot of features that you may not actually need for your use case. If, let's say, your job has been turned into a remote job, or for whatever reason, you need to submit a timesheet for whatever computer work you're doing, Time Trace is going to be able to do everything you need it to do. So this application breaks its data down into two data types. So we have projects and we have records. A project is going to be the overarching thing that you are working on, and then records are going to be individual events where you actually work on that project. Before we can do anything remotely productive with Time Trace, we need to go and make a project. So the way we do that is with the Time Trace, create, and then project command, and then we have to give the project a name. I'm just going to call it, say, Time Trace Video, and it's going to go and make that. And like any good CLI application with subcommands, all of the subcommands have their own documentation. So there's the documentation for create. If we go create project dash H again, there's documentation for that. Obviously, for some of these things, there's not that much documentation that actually needs to be there, but it does help in cases where it actually does need to be there. Now that we have this project, let's go and make a record. So we don't make a record directly with the create command. Instead, what we go and do is we use time trace start and then the name of the project. So in this case, time trace video. And now it's going to go and start that record. And this event is going to keep going until we do a time trace and then stop. And that's going to actually stop that time. Now, you might be wondering, how do we actually go and list out the old records? This is actually kind of annoying the way it works. So what we do is a time trace and then list record subcommand. This isn't actually going to work, though, because it also requires a time period for when the records were actually made. And we can't just say list out all records. It has to be in one of these two date formats, or we can go and do something like today and we'll list out those. Now most of the stuff in here is going to make perfect sense, but you might be wondering about the billable section. Basically what this is, is so you can distinguish between things where you're getting paid with your job and where you're not. So this right here would be marked as a non-billable section, but if we go and make a new record, but this time include the dash B option, if we then go and do a time trace list again, as we can see, this one is now marked as billable. So this one here could say be my lunch break, and this could be when I'm actually working. Now, whenever there is something in your list that doesn't have an end time, that is going to be something that is still currently running. But you don't have to go and run the list command just to see that. There is also a dedicated command to go and do so, and that command is the time trace status command. And as we can see, this is the one we're currently using. Off camera, I went and made another project just to show you what's going to happen if we try to start two records at once. So let's go do a time, trace, start, and then test. And as we can see, it's not actually going to work because the last record we were working on doesn't have an end time. Basically, the idea behind this is you can't exactly work on two jobs at the exact same time. You can only switch between them. So if you're going to switch between them, then you should end the last job and then start on the next one. So now that we don't need that project, let's go and delete it. This can be done with the time trace delete project and then the name of the project. So that test project was just called test. It is going to go and delete it without actually prompting us. That is actually kind of annoying. It's extra annoying because when we delete a record, it actually does prompt us. So the way we go and delete a record is with the time trace and then delete record and then what we have to include for the name is the key that you see over here let's go and delete the first record we made so let's go copy that one and then paste it over here now it actually confirms it. i don't know why it doesn't confirm it for the projects i'm guessing because the application is still in development there are some weird things like that that are actually missing now sometimes you might name the project in a weird way that doesn't actually make any sense luckily we actually can go and edit that the way we do so is with the time trace edit project command and then the name of the project so in this case time trace video and it's actually going to open it up inside of our text editor 
this text editor isn't being defined by the application, it's just pulling from your shell editor variable. And this file is also a JSON file. Now, JSON might seem kind of weird for how little stuff's actually in here, but I'm guessing in the future, the developer actually wants to add some more data into this file. Now that we've saved it, the name should be edited. And if we go and do a time trace list projects command, it should list out the new name of the project. As we can see, just time trace. Now, speaking of listing, there's a little bit of extra filtering we can also do. So while we're listing out the records, if we pass in the dash B option, this will only show the billable options. Sadly, there isn't an option to only list out the non-billable options. I'm not sure why that is currently missing. And if we want to go and list out the records in a specific project, passing the dash P option and then the name of the project is going to do that. I was messing around off camera and noticed a little bit of a bug. So remember how we changed the name of time trace video just to time trace. Now you might expect to be able to go time trace start and then just time trace the name of the project. But it doesn't actually think that a project by that name actually exists. But if we go and do time trace video, that is going to work. So it seems like it's updating the name of the key, but the application isn't actually going by that new name. This is almost certainly due to the way that it actually stores its data. So the folder that all the data is being stored in is a folder called dot time trace in your home directory. And then inside of that, we have a project directory and then all of the project files. Now, one of the files in here is called time trace video dot JSON. And inside of that file, we have the key that we actually modified. So the key actually is correct, but for some parts of the application, it seems to be going by the file name rather than by the contents. And that sort of leads into my next problem. The way the files are being stored is basically just a hack to make it so they are really easy to find. So inside of the records directory, we have the folder for today, and then all of the records we actually made today are their own separate files. Obviously making it very easy to find it, but if you go and change any of these file names, the application basically breaks. And the last thing that really bothers me is there's no way to dump out unformatted data. Sure, this is useful for being able to like actually read, but all of this table stuff and all of these headers, you don't actually need to be there. And in fact, if you're trying to parse it with a machine, it actually makes it actively harder to do. So having a flag just for unformatted output would be a really nice option. When it comes to configuring time trace, there's not exactly much you can do. Basically, this is everything. And developers, Please stop doing this. Config files do not belong in the home directory. There is a config directory for a reason. So the config file is going to be located in home slash dot time trace and then in config.yaml. Basically, we can configure the clock to use 12 hour time rather than 24 hour time. And we can also go and override our editor variable by setting the editor inside of the config. And that's going to be pretty much everything. Now, there is one more command that is in here. That is the report command. However, for some reason, it's in the documentation here, but in the latest version of the binary, it's not actually a command that exists. So I'm guessing maybe it exists in like a future version that's being worked on. I'm not entirely sure. But if you want to go and install this for yourself, there is a Linux binary available. There is a snap. There is a Docker container. It's available on Homebrew. It's available as a Windows binary. It's available on the AUR. Basically, most ways you're going to want to install it. Honestly, I wish I knew about an application like this back when I was doing contract dev work because I sort of roughly guessed the amount of time I was spending on my work. It was fine for the project I was doing because I was basically the only developer on that project, but for something that was actually more team oriented work for an actual company, maybe it would make sense to actually properly track that time. And the criticisms I did bring up for the most part are fairly minor things. The general usage of this application is gonna work basically as well as you need it to actually work. 
So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andrew Mitchell, Nathan David, Carl Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter D, Stephen T, Tony, Tony, uh, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, style, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week and also take YouTube shorts from those live streams and I've got this channel over on Odyssey. That'll be everything for me and I'm out.